All right, dog lovers, get ready. Because today, we are going deep into dog training. That's right. You know, you might think you've got this. Yeah. You know, the basics like sit, stay yeah. calm. But I think there's always more to learn. Oh, yeah, absolutely. When it comes to these cues mm -hmm. that make a really big difference right. in your relationship with your dog. Yeah. We're going to unlock the secrets today behind four commands. Okay. Downstay recall. Mm hmm. And a surprise anti jump cue that I think you're going to love. Oh, I can't wait. And what I think is so fascinating is a lot of times dog owners rely more on their body language. Yeah. Than they do the actual word. Absolutely. So while your dog might seem to understand down, uh -huh. they could actually be responding to your hand gesture. Yes. Or your posture. That's very true. So it's like they're reading our minds. Yes. Not our words. Yeah. I've definitely been guilty of this. So common. You mean all those times that my dog seemingly ignored me? It was because they were paying more attention to my hand signal. Yes. Than the word down. Precisely. Wow. Right. It's more common than you think. Okay. So the article that we're looking at suggests a simple test. Okay. Try mimicking your usual down gesture mm. silently. Okay. Without saying the word. Okay. If your dog lies down, mm -hmm. you know they're responding to your body language, not the cue. Okay. Mind officially blown. I know, right? But how do we fix that? Well, the key is to gradually refine the down cue. Okay. So you want to start with the full hand motion and the treat, mm -hmm. and then you're going to gradually reduce reduce the gesture over time, and then eventually phasing it out completely. So like going from a sweeping hand motion yeah. to maybe just a point, right. and then finally just the word. Exactly. And right. what's really important is practicing down Yeah. in lots of different places. Okay. This helps your dog understand that down means lie down, uh -huh. regardless of where they are. So we call this stimulus control in dog training. Mm -hmm. The cue should have the same meaning in the park. In the living room. Right. You know, anywhere. So it's making sure that cue is crystal clear. Yes. No matter where we are. Mm -hmm. So down at the park. Yeah. Doesn't mean something different. Exactly. From down at home. Right. Okay. This is great. It is. This is eye opening. Good. Let's move on to stay. Okay. This is another cue. Yes. That can sometimes feel like a gamble. Oh, I know. Oh, totally. Yeah. You see that classic? Yeah. Someone's like, stay, stay, stay. Yes. And they're taking like, tiny steps back uh, always. from their dog. Yeah, like they're going to explode. Like they're about to just bolt. Totally. Yeah, I've been that yeah. helicopter parent. Right. Like, <laughs> stay. Yeah. But what's wrong with that? Well, what's really interesting here yeah. is that doing that actually makes the cue less effective. Okay. Because the more you repeat the command hmm. in a hub, the less your dog is actually learning to hold the stay. Oh, okay. Independently. So it's actually counterproductive. It is. I never realized that. Yeah. No. So it's about building confidence. Okay. And independence. Mm. Think about it like teaching a child to ride a bike. Okay. You're not going to hold on forever, are you? Right. So yeah. you gradually let go mm. as they get better. Yeah. So stay training is the same. Okay. We start with short durations. Okay. Close proximity, mm -hmm. minimal distractions. Yeah. And then as the dog progresses, mm. you gradually increase right. the distance, the yeah. time, and the level of distraction. So it's like a gradual release of control. Precise. That makes so much sense. Yeah. But can you imagine if someone did that at the dog park? Oh my gosh. And they were like, see, see, see. Uh, and her dog was like, up chasing butterflies. I know, right? Like, they didn't even hear a word. <laughs> totally. It's just so funny to picture. It. Speaking of distractions, let's yeah. talk about recall. Okay. The come command. Yes. That often is met with, like, selective hearing. Oh, yeah. Or blatantly disregard yeah like why is that it's so frustrating the yeah. problem a lot of times is the association our dogs have with the word come okay so for many dogs it signals the end of playtime okay. or the leash going back on okay. or being taken away from something fun oh so they naturally avoid it it's like their internal monologue is like no not coming exactly the fun is over there yeah. it's not with you uh-huh Okay. That's why this article suggests using a totally new word. Okay. Like here. Okay. To build a fresh positive association. I love that. Right? It's like hitting oh. the reset button on recall. Yes. New word, new vibes. I love it. Okay. But how do we make this here 
irresistible. That is a great quote. Because irresistible is key. Yes. It, we got to beat those distractions. Yeah. Okay, well, we're going to make here synonymous with the best things in life. Okay. So think really high value rewards. Yeah. Like their absolute favorite treats. Okay. A really special toy mm -hmm. or even like a super enthusiastic cuddle session. So every time they hear here, yes. it's party time. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. And here's another great tip. Okay. Don't just practice recall in your backyard. Okay. Take it on the road. Okay. The world is your training ground. Got it. Practice at the park, mm. in the woods, even on a busy street. Uh oh. But obviously on leash for safety. Yeah, sure, sure. But this is where the concept of generalization comes in. Okay. Generalization, what does that mean? So it means teaching your dog that that cue applies in different situations. Okay. So instead of just learning to come when called in the backyard, uh -huh. they're learning to come when called anywhere, right. no matter what distractions are present. So it's like expanding their understanding of here. It's not just about coming when called in one specific spot. Right. It's coming when called, period. Exactly. Right. So the more varied your training environments are, yeah. the more reliable your dog's recall will be. This is so insightful. I think so. Okay, so I'm seeing a pattern. What's that? Like consistency variety. Well, okay and making it super rewarding are like the cornerstones they are. of successful training. They really are. This is fantastic. I can't wait to get into the nitty gritty oh, no, me too. of how to actually implement these. Yes. But before we do that, let's talk about this anti-jump cue. Okay. I am all ears. You're gonna love this one. Okay. It's all about using body language Okay. to discourage jumping and encourage sitting. Right. And the cue itself is so simple. Okay. It's crossing your arms, Wait, seriously? Yeah. Just crossing your arms. That's it. That's it. Yeah, think about it. Okay. When someone approaches you with their arms crossed, it doesn't exactly say, come jump all over me, does it? Right, no. So dogs pick up on these really subtle cues, mm -hmm. and it can actually encourage them to sit politely okay. instead of launching themselves at you. So it's like a silent signal. It is. Of, Let's just keep things calm. Exactly. And collected here. Uh -huh. But does it really work on all dogs? That's a great question. Because, you know, some dog, yeah. they are so jumpy. They are. It's like their default greeting. Right. So You're absolutely right. Yeah. Some dogs are definitely more prone to jumping than others. Uh -huh. And that's where foundation training is so important. Okay. So if you've already taught your dog basic cues, oh, yeah. like sit, yeah. then the arm cross cue becomes much more effective. So it's not like this magical spell. No. It's a tool yes. that works best in conjunction with ah. that solid training foundation. Exactly. Okay, so how do we teach a dog yeah. to respond to this arm cross cue? Oh. Tell me everything. I will. Okay, so it all starts with rewarding those automatic sits. Okay. You know those moments when your dog just happens to sit on their own? Mm. Especially when someone is approaching. Yeah. That's your golden opportunity. Okay. So mark that behavior with a yes. Okay. And give them a treat. So we're catching them in the act of being good. Yes. And reinforcing it. Exactly. I like that. It's like saying, hey, that was awesome. Huh. Let's do that more often. Okay. And as you practice this more and more, yeah. your dog will start to associate someone approaching mm -hmm. with sitting. Okay. So where does the arm crossing come in? Yeah. Where does that come in? So as the person is approaching, okay. have them cross their arms. Okay. It's just the subtle little visual cue okay. that adds another layer of communication to the situation. So it's like the person approaching yeah. and the body language right. are both saying like, hey, yes. time to sit pretty. You got it. I like that. And the more consistent you are with this, yeah. the more quickly your dog will learn mm. that crossed arms equal polite sitting. Okay, so far so good. Yeah. But what if the dog doesn't automatically sit? Right. When someone approaches? Yeah. Do we just stand there awkwardly? Well, you can certainly try waiting a moment or two okay. to see if your dog offers a sit. Okay. But if they're like, you know, really amped up yeah. and about to launch into a jump, right. that's when you would use a verbal cue like sit yes. or maybe even lure them into position okay so it's all about combining those techniques yeah the body language the verbal cue even some luring right to get that point across okay and practice makes perfect it does the more we do this in different situations yes different people the better exactly the more reliable it becomes yeah you'll be amazed at how quickly they pick it up okay i love it it's cool okay speaking of priceless let's revisit that recall cue you know, the one that can sometimes feel like a distant dream. Oh, I know, right? Okay, so 
We talked about the yeah. importance of using a fresh word like here uh -huh. and making it super rewarding. Yes. But how do we actually like put that into practice? Well, remember those high value rewards we talked about? Yes. That's where they really shine. Okay. Okay. We want to make here synonymous mm -hmm. with the best things in life for your dog. Okay. So maybe it's a really special treat okay. or a super treasured toy. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a super enthusiastic cuddle session. Okay. It all depends on your dog. So it's not just about the reward, yeah, but the energy that we bring to it. Exactly. Like we're channeling our inner party animal every time they nail it. I love that. I like. And here's another pro tip. Good. Don't just practice recall in the backyard. Okay. Take it on the road. Right. The world is your training wheel. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. So practice at the park, yeah. in the woods, mm -hmm. even on a busy street. Obviously using a leash for safety. Yes, safety first. Yes. But this is where that concept of generalization comes in again. Generalization, what does that mean? It means teaching your dog that the cue yeah. applies in all different places. Okay. So instead of just learning to come when called in the backyard, mm -hmm. they're learning to come when called yeah. anywhere. Okay. Regardless of what kind of distractions are there. Ah, so it's expanding their understanding of here. It is. It's not just about coming when called in one spot. Right. It's coming when called. Exactly. Period. I love it. Okay. So the more varied your training environments are, yeah. the more reliable your dog's recall will be. Okay, this is so insightful. Good. I'm glad you like it. I'm starting to see the pattern. Yeah. Consistency. Uh-huh. Variety. Mm -hmm. Making it super rewarding. Yes. All cornerstones of good training. They really are. Okay, this is brilliant. It is. I can't wait to try this out. I know, me too. With my own dog. Speaking of trying things out, uh -huh. what about stay? Okay. We, we talked about how important it is to build up to longer stays yeah. and introduce those distractions gradually. Right. But are there any specific techniques there are. that can help us achieve that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. One really effective technique is called back chaining. Okay. It might sound complicated, Okay. but it's actually pretty simple. All right. So it's all about breaking the stay down into smaller steps Okay. and teaching them in reverse order. Hold on, reverse order. I know. That sounds counterintuitive. It does a little bit. Okay. But so instead of starting with your dog staying yeah. while you walk a long distance away, uh -huh. you start with the very last step. Okay. Rewarding them for staying Wait, while you're busy. right next to them. Okay. So once they've mastered that, uh -huh. you take a tiny step back. Okay. Reward them for staying. Okay. And then step right back to their side. So it's like we're building this chain, link by link, yes. working backwards from the final goal. You got it. Okay. And the beauty of back chaining yeah. is that it sets your dog up for success. Okay. So they learn that staying put equals rewards. Right. Which makes them more likely to hold the stay yeah. as you gradually increase the distance and the duration. So clever. Right. I love it. So what about distractions? Yeah, distractions. How do we introduce those? So start small. Okay. And build up gradually. Mm -hmm. So you might start with a toy on the floor a few feet away. Okay. And then progress to maybe someone walking by at a distance. Mm -hmm. And then eventually you can work up to more exciting distractions. So it's like progressively upping the ante. It is. Starting with baby steps. Yes. And then gradually Five. increasing the difficulty level uh -huh. to create a super powered stay. Right. That can withstand the temptation. You got it. This is great. And remember, every dog learns at a different pace. Mm. So be patient. Oh, like be observant. Yeah. And adjust your training plan mm -hmm. based on your dog's individual progress. This is all so fascinating. I'm learning so much. Good. But before we get too carried away, yeah. Are there any other training secrets? Ooh that you want to share. I have a few. Okay. What else can we do to like really set our dogs up yeah. for success? And create a really fulfilling training experience. That's the goal. For both of us. It is. It's amazing how much we can learn from just one deep dive, you know? It is. Into these dog training secrets. Absolutely. You know, we've kind of decoded down, we've explored stay, and we've ah. uncovered this whole arm cross it thing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. But as with any learning journey, yeah. I'm sure there are those moments well, yeah. where things don't go exactly according to plan. Absolutely. And every dog is different too. Right. And what works for one dog uh -huh. might not work for another. Of course. And even the most well behaved dogs have their off. Oh, for sure. So let's talk about some common training challenges. Okay. And how we can troubleshoot those. Yeah, because that's all part of the process, right? It is. Okay, let's start with down. Okay. 
What are some things that people might encounter? Yeah. Kind of like snags with this. So one common issue is the dog popping right back up. Okay. After they go down. Oh yeah. It's like they're doing a down up, down up. I've seen that. Right. It's like they think down is a quick touch and go. Yes. And then back to business as usual. Exactly. So how do we fix that? Well, a lot of times this happens yeah. because the dog hasn't learned to associate down okay. with staying down. Yeah. They think it's a quick down and up, yeah. and then they can get up again. Right. So the key is to gradually increase the duration uh, of the down. So start with a second or two, yeah. and then slowly work our way up. Exactly. Okay, so it's all about building that duration. It is. What about stay? Okay. Where are yeah. some of the challenges there? Distractions. Yo. That's the ultimate test. Yeah, Right. absolutely. It's one thing for a dog to hold a stay, Fight. in a quiet living room. Right. But it's a whole other ball game when there are squirrels or yeah. other dogs playing. A mailman. Yes, exactly. So how do we prepare them for those real world distractions? Well, we want to start yeah. by introducing those distractions oh, yeah. in a controlled environment. Got it. We start with mild distractions, right. like maybe a toy on the floor a few feet away. Okay. Then as your dog masters that level, mm -hmm. we gradually increase the intensity of the distraction. Okay. Maybe someone walks by hey. at a distance. Right. Or another dog is playing on the other side of the room. Yeah. So it's like that boot camp right. progressively upping the ante. I like it. To create that super powered stay. Now let's talk about the cue. Oh, okay. That strikes fear into the hearts yes. of many dog owners. Oh, I know. Recall, okay, why is come so challenging? Oh, it can be. For so many. One common challenge is the dog coming part way. Uh-huh. And then veering off in another direction. I know that game. Right. They get close enough to give us a glimmer of hope. Yeah, and like then they're like, I'm going to go follow my nose. Exactly. Or my playful impulses. They have a mind of their own. Yes. So this often happens yeah. because the dog hasn't fully learned okay. that coming all the way to you is the best, most rewarding option. Okay. So it's about making ourselves yes. more appealing uh -huh. than the squirrels. Right. And the scents. All the good stuff. Yeah. So here's a tip to make recall training even more fun. Okay. I'm listening. Okay. So. You're going to call your dog mm -hmm. using your chosen recall word, oh, whatever yeah. that is. Yeah. And when they start running towards you, uh -huh. turn and run away from them. Wait, what? what? Run away from them? I know it sounds counterintuitive. It does. But dogs have such a strong chase instinct. Right. And by running away from them, yeah. you're tapping into that natural urge to chase. Oh. So they want to come to you even more. That's so smart. It's pretty cool. I love that. It turns recall practice into a game. Yeah. That they really enjoy. Okay, let's shift gears to the arm cross sit. Okay. Are there any challenges with that cue? Sometimes dogs will try to weave through the person's legs. Okay. Or jump up sideways instead yeah. of sitting. Oh, so they're like, okay, if I can't go straight up, right. I'll find another way to get your attention. Exactly. They're testing those boundaries. Right. So in those cases, it's really important to go back to basics right. yeah. and reinforce that sit cue on its own. Got it. So once they have a really solid understanding of sit, uh -huh. you can reintroduce the arm cross. Okay. So it's all about making sure that foundation is yeah. really strong uh -huh. before we start adding on all the extra stuff. Exactly. It's like building a house. You know, you can't just put the roof on right. if you don't have a foundation. You need that solid foundation. And remember, yes. training's a journey. It is. It's not a destination. That's right. And there will be. Ups and downs. Yes, there will be. Moments of frustration. And moments of pure joy. But it's all about yeah. staying patient, uh -huh. staying consistent, yeah. and enjoying that process of building that bond. Yeah, that connection. Yes. So important. Absolutely. Okay, as we wrap up our deep dive today. Yes. What are some final words of wisdom Ooh. you'd like to leave our listeners with? Every dog is different. Okay. Every training journey is unique. Uh -huh. There's no one size fits all approach. Right. So find what works for you and your dog. Okay. Stay positive yeah. and never give up. Never give up. On that bond that you share. That's so beautiful. Mm. It's all about you know, embracing that journey, yeah. the challenges, uh -huh. the triumphs, the good, the bad, celebrating that connection we have yeah, with I, our canine companions. I love that. So to our listeners out there, yes, experiment with these techniques uh -huh. and remember patience, consistency, 
and positive reinforcement. Those are the keys. Are the keys to success. They really are. And who knows, you might discover some training secrets. You might. Of your own along the way. Absolutely. Happy training, everybody. Happy training. And remember, there's a whole world of possibilities out there. There is. Waiting to be explored. Yes. With your furry friend by your side. That's the best part. So get out there. Yeah. Have fun. Have fun. Keep those tails wagging. I love it. Thank you for your watching. If you find this video is helpful to you, please share it with your family and friends. Leave us a like and subscribe to our channel. And turn on the bell, that way you don't miss every single one of our videos. So that's for today's video, see you next time.